session we would be talking about the drainage system in India. The previous session we have already talked about the physiography of India. Now when we discuss physiography, most of the physiographic uh, uh, features in India have been demarcated based on the drainage. Now in the class on stream orders, we had already seen that there are streams of various orders that join to form the main stream. So two first order streams join to form a second order stream, two second order stream join to form a third order stream and so on. And the region, if I understand this region as a whole, this would be the drainage basin for the main river that is river 3. Now in case of India, we would be understanding drainage system in very simple terms. So we can demarcate the drainage system into two parts, the Himalayan region or the Himalayan rivers I can say and the peninsular rivers. So that's the first classification that we'll start with, the Himalayan rivers and the peninsular rivers. Later on, the peninsular rivers can be further subdivided into the rivers draining into west and the rivers draining into east. So we'll be understanding all the river systems today based on the simple classification, dividing the drainage system as Himalayan drainage system and peninsular drainage system. So if I draw a map of India, the lower region would be the peninsular region and the above region would be the Himalayan region. So under Himalayan region, we would be understanding three basic rivers that's Indus, Ganga and Brahmaputra. So Indus towards the west, Brahmaputra towards the east and Ganga draining the central part of India. And then you have the peninsular India, the peninsular region. In the peninsular rivers, we will be talking about the west flowing and the east flowing. When I say west flowing, Narda, Tapti and you have Sabarmati and Mahi as the main rivers that we would be discussing. When we will be talking about the east flowing rivers, there are four basic rivers, Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri. So these would be the main rivers that we would be discussing towards the east. Now we will be talking about each of these drainage systems and rivers one by one. So if I go on to a simple map of India that explains the basic rivers as we have discussed here, you have some of the rivers here with their tributaries. And also I forgot to mention some of the rivers in the south that is Pinnaru, Pallar and Vagai. So these are some of the other uh, rivers which are not so important in case of the drainage system when we talk about but although they are major rivers draining into the south India. Now we will be talking about the Himalayan drainage system and the peninsular drainage system as I said. So the region which is marked by light blue color as you can see here shows the drainage system of one river. So this whole drainage system is of the Ganga river. You have this drainage system of the Indus basin and this drainage system of the Brahmaputra river. And similarly you have the drainage system of the south the peninsular rivers, so you have the Godavari Basin, Krishna Basin, Kaveri Basin and Mahanadi Basin and three other uh, small basins that is Subranekha, Brahmani and uh, the Damodar River Basin which would be part of Ganga River system, we will be discussing that. So now we will start with the first basic river system of the Himalayan River. So we will be talking about the Himalayan rivers first. So the first is Indus river system. Now Indus river system comprises of five major tributaries. Now Indus, if I talk about this specific river, it's one of the major rivers that drain the Himalayan region and the tributaries can be classified into two types. So the tributaries that drain the hilly region of Indus and the plains of Indus. So when I say the plains of Indus, it's Satlaj, Bias, Ravi, Chenav and Jehlam. So these five rivers form the tributaries in the plains. However, if I talk, uh, talk about the hilly region, the tributaries are Gilgit, Shiok and you have Karadu as the main tributaries which drain the hilly region. Now Indus uh, river finally drains at the port of Karachi 
in Pakistan. So the final point where it meets the ocean is Karachi in Pakistan and it originates in Kailash and Mansarovar. So Mansarovar Lake in Tibet would be the origin for Indus. Now we will be talking about the tributaries. So as we have already mentioned in the class on physiography, the region between the two rivers is a region which is a very fertile region and it is known as Dua. So you have the region between Bias and Satlaj as the Bist Jalandar Dua, region between Ravi and Satlaj as Bari Dua, the region between Ravi and Chenab as Rachna, so Ra and Che, so Rachna would be the uh, dua between Ravi and Chenab, between Jehlam and Chenab it would be Chaj and between Indus and Jehlam it would be Sindhasagar. So these are the major duaps that exist between the five major rivers that, that are the tributaries to the main river system that is Indus. Now out of these five river system, Bias, Ravi and Chenab, so I have another pen here, so I have Bias. Ravi and Chena. These three originate in the Kullu hills. The region of Kullu Manali. So you have the Kullu hills in Himachal Pradesh where Chena, Ravi and Vyas originate. Then you have Jehlam that originates at Verina. And finally you have Satlaj that originates in Rakkas Lake that's in Tibet. So these are the origin points for the five rivers. Now, <clears throat> if I talk about Bias, it joins Satlaj at a point known as Harik. Okay. Now out of these five, <clears throat> Chenab is one of the uh, largest tributaries of Indus followed by Jhelum. So the first is Chenab followed by Jhelum. So these two are the major tributaries. Now Jhelum, it originates in Verina and flows down and on the other hand you have Satlaj that comes from Tibet. Since it's originating in Tibet, it would be crossing the Himalayas to enter into India and the region where it enters is known as Shipkila Pass. La word means a gap between the mountain ranges. So anywhere if I mention Shiplika, Brozila, Zuzila. So those all would be the major passes that enter into India. So Shiplika Pass is the region through which Satlaj enters into India. And finally all of these rivers meet into the Indus river system. So these, this was the first major river system that we talked about. Now the next major river system that we would be discussing is the Ganga river system. Now Ganga river system or the Ganga drainage basin we will understand in two forms. First is the, originating, uh, the originating point of Ganga. So we say Ganga originates from Gangotri glacier. Now if I talk about Ganga we understand that there are two major tributaries that join to form the main river Ganga and those are Bhagirathi and Alaknanda. So Bhagirathi and Alaknanda meet at a region known as Devaprayag and from there Ganga originates. Now out of this Bhagirathi and Alaknanda, Bhagirathi originates from Gangotri glacier or we say Gomuk region while Alaknanda originates from Tibet. So you have Alkapuri and you have Tibet from where Alaknanda originates. Now there are various further tributaries that join Alaknanda. So the region where Saraswati joins Alaknanda is known as Keshav Praya, where Dholi Ganga joins Alakna, uh, Alaknanda is known as Vishnu Praya, Nandakini joining Alaknanda is Nanda Praya and Pindari joining Alaknanda is Karna Praya. So all the regions where there is a confluence of rivers have been known as Prayags in India and finally you have Mandakini joining Alaknanda at Rudra Prayag and the Dev Prayag that's the most common region we talk about where Bhagirathi and Alaknanda join and finally Ganga and Yamuna join at Prayag or uh, Allahabad. 
Okay, so you have Ganga here and finally Yamna coming out and joining at Prayam, that's Allahabad, the present day Allahabad. So this is how we understand the origin of Ganga. Now Ganga is one of the largest river that is draining the northern plains of India. So it's very important uh, from that point of view. However, if I talk about the map of Ganga, there are now, for Indus, we didn't talk about the left tributaries or the right tributaries because all the tributaries were joining from one side. However, for Ganga Brahmaputra, we talk about left and right tributaries because there are rivers joining from different directions. The tributaries joining from different directions. So, tributary is a river that joins the main river. So, this is the center one is the Ganga, the thickest one, that's the main river. Now, the rivers... Uh, the left tributaries I would say are Gomti, Gaggar, Gandak and Kosi that are joining Ganga river. However, the right tributaries which are joining from the right are Yamuna, Son, Son and Damodar. So you have Damodar joining here. So these are the major tributaries that join from right and left. Now we will be understanding these one by one. So, if I talk about the right tributaries, let's first talk about Yamuna. Yamuna, as I said, originates from Yamnotri glacier. There are various further tributaries of Yamuna, that's Chambal, Banas, Parvati and Betwa. So, these join Yamuna again. And finally, Yamuna join Ganga at, Dev, uh, at Prayag or present day Allahabad. The next river that we would be talking about is Son River. Son River has an antecedent formation as you can see here. So, it is an antecedent river. We have discussed this in the class on the types of river. And finally, you have the Damodar River. Damodar originates in Palamau district of Chhattisgarh. Okay. And it finally joins Ganga. It is also known as Sorrow of Bengal. It passes through most of the regions of Bengal, creating flood and it joins here in the region of West Bengal where Ganga finally converts into I could say Bhagirathi Hooghly region and in Bangladesh it is known as the Padma Meghna where it joins the uh, Brahmaputra. So Ganga moving on from here in West Bengal forms the Bhagirathi Hooghly region and finally in uh, Bangladesh it forms the Padma Meghna after joining with Brahmaputra. So that was Damodar. Now we will talk on uh, about the left tributaries of Ganga. So the first left tributary of Ganga we will be talking about is Ram Ganga. Ram Ganga originates in Kumaon. Kumaon that is Nainital. Now Ram Ganga joins Ganga near Farukabad. So the place where these rivers meet Ganga is really important. And finally the region where they are joining. So it would be joining at Bhagirathi Hooghly Delta and it joins near Farukabad. So that is Ram Ganga. The next here is Ghagar. Ghagar joins, uh, originates east of Gangotri. So you have Gangotri glacier here. East of Gangotri would be the origin for Ghagar. And Ghagar joins Ganga at Chapra. So you have Ghagar joining at Chapra. Then you have the next major river that is Kosi. Kosi is known as Sorrow of Bihar. As we call Damodar as Sorrow of Bengal, uh, Kosi is known as Sorrow of Bihar because it is supposed that so Kosi brings lot of floods in the region of Bihar. Now Kosi originates in the Nepal Sikkim region, Nepal Tibet and Sikkim and finally drains into uh, through uh, Bihar and joins Ganga. The region where it joins Ganga is Bhagalpur. And where it enters India is Saharsa. So that's about Kosi. And finally you have Gandak. So you have Gandak that originates from Nepal-China border. It comes down, enters at Champaran where the Gandhi movement started. So it enters at Champaran and finally joins at Sonpur. So the region where it joins is Sonpur. So these are some of the left-sided tributaries that are important for uh, understanding the 
Ganga river system. Now the next river system that we would be talking about is Brahmaputra river system. Now Brahmaputra originates in the Chemyungdang glacier in Tibet and then it follows towards the east, drops down towards the south. The region it follows till here it's known as Sangpo. Then it takes a sudden turn and drops towards the south and this region is known as this section of Brahmaputra is known as Dihang and finally it joins Ganga and forms the one, one of the world's biggest deltas which are known as Sundarban deltas. So Sundarban forest and Sundarban the name originates from the tree Sundari that's abundant in this region. It's a kind of mangrove vegetation that's found here and nematophores that occur in the region of Sundarbans. So Sundarbans is one of the major delta. Now there are major tributaries that join Brahmaputra. So the tributaries joining from the north are Subansari. Subansari is one of the major tributaries that join from the north. You have Dansari and Kaming. These are joining from the north. However, you have tributaries that join from the south. Desang is another tributary that joins from south. And finally, you have Kopuli that joins from the south. So these are some of the river systems that join Brahmaputra from north and south, the other uh, rivers of this region. It's one of the largest river and along with Ganga, it forms the largest glacier in this region. Now moving on to the next, you have as we discussed the northern Himalayan rivers. Now we will move on to the southern rivers or the peninsular rivers. Under the peninsular as we said, we would be classifying it into east flowing rivers and west flowing rivers. So let's first talk about the east flowing rivers. Under the east flowing river, the first river is the Mahanadi river. Mahanadi originates at Dandakaran. It drains most of the regions of uh, Odisha and then you have regions of Chhattisgarh. Uh, you have uh, parts of Madhya Pradesh and Bihar from where Mahanadi crosses. There are various tributaries that join the left and the right tributaries. The right tributaries are known as Tail Ong and joke while you have left tributaries which are known as Seonath, Hasdev and Mand. So these are some of the tributaries that join Mahanadi. Now the region you have the Damodar region you have three basic rivers that form small deltas not that important however not that major uh, river basins but they are important. So first is Subranekha. Subranekha originates in Ranchi. So you have Subranekha originating in Ranchi. It drains most of the parts of Jharkhand, Odisha and West Bengal and in the Subranekha is as it was called in the olden days you have gold traces that have been found and because of that the name is Swarnekha. So that's one of the rivers and the other two important rivers are Brahmani and Baitarni. So these three are kind of minor river basins that we will study. So Brahmini originates near Raulkela. It's the second largest uh, river of Odisha. And you have uh, the next river that is Baitarni. It originates in the Gupta Ganga hills and it forms at the region or the boundary of Odisha and Jharkhand. So you have the boundary between Odisha and Jharkhand that's formed by Baitarni river. The next is Godavari. Godavari is the largest and the biggest river system of the peninsular India. It originates in the Trimbakeshwar or the Trimbak Plateau. So you have Trimbak Plateau as the origin for Godavari uh, in near Nasik in northern Sahadris. And then it finally drains into Bay of Bengal. 
it's one of the largest river crossing most of the regions of maharashtra andhra pradesh telangana and finally draining in the bay of bengal and this river system has a lot of tributaries so the right side tributary there is only one major tributary that you must remember that is manjra and on the left side you have other small tributaries which are vardha indravati and pen ganga so you have vardha pen ganga and indravati now below godavari you have the next river system which is krishna krishna originated north of mahabaleshwar in western ghats so you have western ghats near mahabaleshwar as the origin for krishna river again it crosses the state of karnataka and andhra pradesh and finally drains into bay of bengal the tributaries are bhima ghat prabha bal Malprabha are some of the major tributaries of Krishna River. Finally, Kaveri River. Kaveri River drains most of Kerala and Tamil Nadu. The origin for Kaveri River is Brahmagiri. Now, <coughs> there is a knot which is known as Sri Rangam, and the river, if it, uh, the north branch of this river is known as Kolleru, and the south branch of this river is known as Kaveri. so that is how we have kaveri river again uh, it has major tributaries now the tributaries here left and right the names are very similar so it's important that you don't get confused the important left hand tributaries is arkavati while the right hand tributary is amravati so arkavati left and right is amravati so it's important that you don't get confused between the names other right hand tributaries are bhavani and kabini and the left hand tributaries are hemvati and herangi so those are the uh, rivers that drain towards the east now we'll be moving on to the four major rivers that drain towards the west so you have narmada tapi sabarmati and mahanadi sabarmati and mahanadi are minor rivers Sab- Mah- mahi originates not mahanadi sorry mahi and sabarmati and you have narmada and tapti so you have mahi that originates in the vindhya himalayan belt it drains the region of madhya pradesh gujarat and rajasthan then you have sabarmati draining again on the uh, in the arabian sea it originates in the mewar hills of rajasthan mewar region of rajasthan and finally uh, some of the major tributaries are uh, hathimati and vakul for sabarmati so you have hathmati and vakul as the main tributaries for sabarmati now the two most important west flowing rivers those are narmada and tapti as you can see towards the east you have deltic formations or delta formations the river draining towards the west drain directly into the ocean and they have formation of estuaries they do not drain as delta rather they drain as estuaries now narmada it originates in amarkantak in madhya pradesh so you have the origin as amarkantak in madhya pradesh now narmada crosses uh, three major states that's mp maharashtra and gujarat the left tributaries of narmada are tava and burner the right side tributaries are kolar and barna so those are the major tributaries of narmada now narmada has one of the world's famous waterfalls that those are known as dhuadhar falls near jabalpur and they are known as mist of clouds there is so much of uh, kind of uh, uh, mist that generates so it appears as a cloud formation by mist so this is the dhuadhar falls that are located at narmada river Uh, it's the longest west flowing river and it lies between vindhyas and satpura so vindhya in the north and satpura in the south and then you have tapti river which lies south of satpura the origin of uh, tapi tapti river is multai so multai is the origin and then uh, it goes south of satpura as i mentioned uh, there are li- left side and right uh, the right tributaries the major left tributaries are barni parna girna while the major right tributaries here are gunjal betul and arunavati so those are the major tributaries of tapti 
So this is how we understand the drainage system of India. Now as I uh, said previously, it is important uh, to focus on the writing styles if it is a kind of descriptive question because you need to understand a good classification to explain all the rivers. If you start explaining all the rivers in one go, it will not pay you a lot. However, if you explain those by a systematic classification that would give an impression to the examiner that you know the content and you know the arrangement of the river very well. We will be discussing more topics related to geography of India in the further videos. You can subscribe to our channel for any further updates. Have a good day.